how did I start couponing? Um, the first time I remember using coupons was back right after I graduated from college. I had a horrible job that I got paid virtually nothing and it was the end of the month and I had no money and I had no cat food and um, the cats wanted to eat. So I went into Winn-Dixie and they were, they doubled to 50 cents. Um, on the cat food boxes were coupons for 50 cents off any size meow mix. The boxes were 99 cents. So I went in hoping to buy one box with the $1.50 I had left in my checking account and ended up getting every box they had for free. So that was my first big couponing experience. And after that, it was just fun to see what I could get for how little I could get it for. Um. And since they do it this way, it's pretty clean because you just get the newspapers. You don't get the plastic bottles and cans and stuff. Um, every once in a while, you'll find one that maybe that cat has peed on, but you can smell that so you don't have to touch it. Um, so it's really pretty clean. And I mean, we, we, they, they call it dumpster diving, but it's not really dumpster diving when you do it this way. In our, in our county, um, they, they have a big recycling program. The trucks do come around to the houses every two weeks. But they don't come around to like apartment complexes, um, condominium complexes, uh, and not all the neighborhoods. So um, at each fire station, they have a recycling center set up, and um, the newspaper recycling part is this bin um, that you can just walk in and basically take what you want. Um, I've heard places say that there are a lot, you know, some counties there are laws against that, some states there are laws against that. I I've never had anybody question why I am standing in the recycling bin digging through newspapers. I've actually run into some pe other people doing it, um, usually when there's been a free coupon out for pet food. Um, I've met a lot of people that way. <laughs> um, but basically just go in and try to find the Sunday papers. I was trying to figure out how to get more and I kept thinking about people throwing away their Sunday papers and all those wasted coupons. So um, I started driving around town <laughs> and we have uh, boxes where recycle centers pick up used newspapers. And I stopped at a couple and sort of peeked under the lid, but I was embarrassed that somebody might see me um, because, you know, people aren't putting their, their newspapers in there for people to go through them. That, that's not what they're for. So one day it occurred to me that they might have newspapers at the recycle center at, um, at the university. So I walked over there one day and uh, there were the two bins full of newspapers and I just thought this is, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, so then we look at this one and I can see, okay, here are some inserts and they look very much like they haven't even been looked at. So I'll pull up that section of the paper. But see, it's all still together, which means the coupons are probably still in it. Um, you know, as long as this isn't Easter stuff, there we go. There's one pack of coupons. You know, I do quite well over there. I can get quite a few. Um, it's a good exercise. I meet nice people. Um, it's nice and clean. You don't run across garbage or anything in the bins. Um, and I'm the only one that's ever there, going through the newspapers. Um, it'll get pretty full. Um, I've been here, but this is about medium. I've been here before when it's been full up to the um, back end of it. Um, I've actually been in it when the truck's been backing up to come pick it up, but um, it's a noisy truck. You can hear it coming. My parents live in a retirement community now, so they save me their coupons, and they get like four or five newspapers on a Sunday, so I'll have all those coupons to go through. And one thing that's a little embarrassing, I was even, you know, taken aback what I did was they had the uh, retirement, like, clubhouse, and they had a coupon exchange there. So I'd drive 100 miles to my parents' house and say hi, bye, and run into the clubhouse at 9 o'clock at night going through all the coupons and see what I could grab that the seniors put in there. I would dumpster dive for a while and then uh, and get the, the um, inserts. And then the boxes, we'd rip all the UPCs off the boxes and stuff. And then we went big time. We went to the actual landfill itself. And oh my God, we could spend the whole day there just 
just filling up bags to get a whole trash bag full of box tops and inserts and all, go drag it to the car, go back. But then after a while, they made us, they wouldn't let us come back anymore. But it's always an adventure. It's sort of like fishing. You don't quite know what's under the water. So. I have just dug out of the trash. Um, well, this is a good one because right now, um, CVS is giving away this type of toothpaste five of them for each extra care buck or for each card holder you can get five and I just pulled out a coupon for a dollar off of Press Nature's Expression Toothpaste so I can go in and get a Nature's Expression Toothpaste which I think is $2.99 this week at um, CVS I'll get it for $1.99 but CVS will then give me $2.99 back in extra care bucks so I've ended up making a dollar not just getting the item for free but making an extra dollar on that item here is a coupon for 50 cents off a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser I love Mr. Clean Magic Erasers because I have two little boys and they do things like draw on the walls and use permanent marker on their toys Mr. Clean Magic Eraser will get that off so there's my pl product plug <laughs> But the right now Target has them on clearance, so I can take this coupon into Target where they're clearancing the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers for 53 cents and get one for three cents instead of the normal two dollars that I might spend. Oh good, one of my favorites is the Ken's, two dollars off. So I just made two bucks. There's a buy one get one on any CoverGirl face product. That's a good one to keep a hold of because frequently the drug stores will do specials um, where if you buy one you get one free so if I take this coupon in and they're having one of those types of sales I end up with two free. I was at Albertsons one day and I just happened to have some in-store coupons out of their flyer which I never did and I was talking to um, the woman who was bagging my groceries and I said well this is pretty cool you know I bet if I really worked at this I could like save 50 percent you know and she said well you know there's this woman who comes here and she belongs to this game online game and does couponing and she walks out of here for like a couple bucks for a whole grocery cart and full or grocery cart full so I thought about it and got kind of excited and waited like weeks and weeks and weeks and remembered hopped online and thought you know, is this really possible? So I looked into it a little bit further, read some more of their literature, signed up, got all excited, and started going out on my own, not realizing that there was a whole board community and a whole culture of coupons. So I did that for probably nine months and um, went nuts, you know, a dollar for beans and and you know, thinking I was getting these really great deals, started telling everybody, nobody cared. <laughs> and it grew from there. Once I discovered message boards, I, I, I got deeper and deeper into it and, and uh, refined it more and more. My favorite website is Hot Coupon World. There are a few others out there, too many for me to list. But there's a lot of good ones out there. I think if you do a search for coupon forums, you'll find more than enough. And you'll find one that you're comfortable with, that you like the people and, and that has the deals in your area. That's really important. That's one of the reasons why I like Hot Coupon World. There's a lot of couponers on there from my area. So if you live in another part of the country where you have different stores and different sales, you might be better off finding a forum where there are people from your area to share the deals and the, and the, the sales from your area too. So that, that's really important to find a forum where you can get the information that you need. I was really excited about anything free, whether I needed it or not. If it was, I couldn't believe I could actually take something out of a store and not pay for it. It, it, it was uh, such an exciting feeling and that was my, you know, my first taste of the possibilities. But even then I didn't realize that I could actually get, you know, more important things like free chicken, you know. Um, so just, just uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, those kinds of simple items. I didn't have the concept of, of stockpiling coupons. Um, so I'd get the local paper um, and once in a while 
I'd be able to match something up for free. Not realizing again that, you know, the larger city newspaper would give me, you know, a lot broader opportunity for those kinds of things. So it was pretty minimal, you know, working with pretty minimal coupons, being thrilled with one or two items that I could actually not pay for. I was getting uh, spaghetti sauce. So I think I was, I don't know, really cheap, like 20 cents or I might have even been getting it for free for a while and I'd bring in like 20 jars of spaghetti sauce at a time and line, up, line, line them up out front and ask the receptionist to give them away. We've been asked at the church food pantry not to donate any more pickles, relish, or enchilada sauce because we donate so much of it that they really can't even give any more away. So even if I find a good deal and the store is going to pay me a little bit to take the relish or the pickles, I don't buy it because I, I can't, I don't have anything to do with 50 jars of pickles anymore because they just, they, they won't take it. So we, we don't always buy the best deals. If we don't have a, a place for it to go, we, we sometimes pass. I think they were just amazed, you know, that, that somebody was giving away food. We tend not to stockpile food because most of the Food that's available free after coupons tends to be the newer convenience foods and I don't like to um, use those. I don't think they're very nutritious. I think they have strange things in them like MSG that I don't want to have a lot of in our diets. Um, so I tend to use fresh fruits and vegetables and fresh meat, um, which it's very hard to find coupons for any of those items. There are a few floating around. If you buy this, you can get a dollar off meat. and what I do is one of the local supermarkets, again with the pharmacy gift cards, you go and you transfer or bring in your new prescription and they give you a $20 gift card. So then I can take that $20 gift card and use it to pay for the meat and the fresh fruits and vegetables. Before I started this, I was... I put myself on an Atkins-like diet, so I wasn't eating carbs, and so we didn't have chips or cookies or you know anything like that in the house, or even bread. Um, you know, and I did really well. I lost a lot of weight, um, but then when I started with the coupons, if something was free, whether I ate it or not, I'd bring it home. I mean, it's hard to resist free cake mix and free frosting and free cookies and marshmallow popcorn, those kinds of things. So, um, and it was really easy to get into eating them as well <laughs> and craving them. And so that was rough, you know, getting over the hurdle of bringing it home because it's free and then eating it because it's there. I, you know, I still do that somewhat, but I've, I've gotten a, under control a lot better. I have 90 family-sized bags of M&Ms. I do. It's true. It's very true. And I got them at Target when they have a coupon and it'll say things like um, 75 cents off Easter M&Ms. And then you know what they do? Is after Easter they make them 75 cents or less and then you really just have to buy them then even if there's 90 bags. You, you kind of have to buy them then. Why is it such a big deal to get a $20 gift card when you get your prescription refilled? But there's a profit in it. My copay for my medicine is $10. Um, so I pay $10 for my medicine and I get a $20 gift card in return. You know, in addition, my logic to it is it's a prescription that I need to have. So I'm going to get it refilled whether people are going to be giving me a gift card or not. I might as well go to some place that they're going to give me a gift card. Um, and if one place will only give me a gift card on a transferred prescription, then the next month I transfer it to a different pharmacy, get their gift card, and then the following month transfer it back, get that gift card, and we just keep going back and forth. The pharmacies make their profit in what the insurance company pays them, so they don't really care whether they're giving these gift cards away or not. There's a rebate now. That, that was part of the deal right here. Get $10 back by 15 participating products. And um, all you have to do is send a, uh, the receipt in. 
and uh, they have a list of products that you can use. So the Slim Jims are on sale. So basically, I'll make $10 on this because if I could buy the, get the items for free, and I'll send this rebate in with the receipts, so all it's going to cost me is a 41 cent stamp now, and I'll get a $10, bill, a $10 check in the mail, which you always got to take advantage of those. So you got to watch for those. And they usually come you know, in the Sunday papers or in the back of the, in the end of the aisles. I do tend to tell people if there's a good sale on something, um, especially when my sons were little um, and wearing diapers and drinking formula. Um, I tended to stock up on diapers when they were on clearance um, and formula when it was on clearance using my coupons and my formula checks that they'll send in the mail. Um, and I would see other parents buying, you know, a smaller size diaper that I couldn't use anymore. And I would say, oh, hey, if you want, you know, there's a big sale on this other brand. They're clearancing out these packages that only, you know, that have 26 in the 26 diapers in them. They're changing it to 24 diapers. So if you go get the packages with 26 diapers, they're only $3 as opposed to $12. And Frequently, they would say things to me like, oh, we don't use that brand of diaper, as if it really makes all that much difference what kind of diaper you use for your children. Um, it, but I haven't gotten any really neg super negative responses, um, just sort of snobby responses, I guess, is the best way to say it. Oh, I have enough money to buy my, di you know, my child this brand diapers. Like, okay, well, if you want to waste your money, have fun. All right, this bag is the errand bag. Um, actually, this was a free promo bag that I got at Coldwater Creek for spending X amount of money, so most of my larger bags are. But the bag was free, and it's a cute little bag. And I, what I do is I throw anything in here that I think I might want, that I need to deal with, um, that's an errand. And then when I go to take the kids to school, I just take this bag and I've got everything I could possibly need. I don't have to dig through my desk, which you can see in the background is a mess. Uh, I have a coupon for 20% off my purchase at Express. I don't actually shop at Express, so I'm trying to find someone to give that to, but it keeps it in the forefront of my mind. Um, then I have a coupon for 15% off at Talbot's, which I think I actually have two of. Somewhere there's another one of those. Um, I always try and keep a couple of Beth, Bed Bath & Beyond coupons handy just in case I'm in there getting anything or at linens and things because they'll take them too. Uh, Calico Corners, which is a fabric store, sent me a, you know, buy X amount, get X amount off. Again, I don't think I need anything, but, it's, you know, you never know when you're going to end up somewhere. Ooh. Then we have the prescription that's leaking. So we'll take that out um, and wipe off my extra care bucks. Alright, there's a long line of extra care bucks that, let's see, from all of the stuff they're giving away this month at CVS. So those expire mid-May. I'm going to have to find something to spend these on. So those are in there. Um, then there's more extend roll coverage papers. These are uh, computer printouts. Get a, first we have a $25 gift card for my new or transferred prescription at CVS. Um, and that one's nice because it's new or transferred instead of one or the other. Um, usually I have a coupon and it's for the one that I am not doing. Um, so I'll have a coupon for new and I'll have a transfer. And then I've got some printouts of $4 off your next $20 purchase at CVS. Um, then I have some magazines so that I have something to read when I'm sitting in the carpool line waiting to pick up my oldest child. We've got uh, an extra 15% off an item at Barnes & Noble sticker. We've got some Nordstrom cash from using their credit card. We have 75% off a full circle item which is Ucrop's store brand um, organic. We use their milk. We have some more extra care bucks. 
I have some cold water creek cash from using their credit card. I have some cigarette coupons. I have Build a Bear Workshop $5 gift certificate. And what we'll do with this, um, both the boys are on their mailing list and have their birthdays. Um, so what we'll do with this is we'll go in and um, find a new little outfit for the bears that they've already built. Um, we won't use it to build a new bear. But, you know, we can go and get an outfit. Um, here are some coupons from Seeing the Easter Bunny, where if I purchase a combo meal, we get a free four-pack kids meal from Chick-fil-A. Oh yeah, see here's the other Talbot's 15% off coupon. Here's another CVS $4 off 20 version. Um, I've got a coupon that Target sent me in the mail um, with various Target coupons off of all kinds of things. Um, Target coupons can be combined with manufacturer coupons. Most store coupons can. So you can use two coupons on the same item. Um, this is my little coupon envelope where um, I've actually divided it up by store names, if you would like to take a picture of that. Um, and I try to keep like the Rite Aid gift cards in the Rite Aid spot. Um, anything for CVS might go in the CVS spot. If I'm very organized, a lot of these, these things will be in here. You know, but I also have all of my gift certificates, TJ Maxx gift certificate, Barnes & Noble gift certificate, um, my printer inks, you know, which printer inks I need for my printer. Um, and I just try and keep these things relatively tidy so I can find them when I need them. Um, I have some more magazines. We have, what else do we have in here? More magazines. Yep, oh, this is very important. I am room parent for my little one's um, classroom, so if the phone tree gets act gets um, activated, I have all of the parent phone numbers so that I can call people and say, <gasps> "School's closing early. Go pick up your child." Um, Ten dollars free from the Staples Copy Center. Um, now, the thing about the Staples Copy Center is you might get these in the mail, and you might say to yourself but I don't need anything copied. Well, at the copy center, you can also get address labels, address stamps, signature stamps. You can get things laminated. Um, so if you have some kids artwork that you want to save, you can take it and get it laminated and use something like that for, you know, to get it for less. Um, if you take in some ink cartridges, you get another $3 off that purchase. Um, for a while, the Staples was sending me a lot of coupons for $10 off 10 and I used those to get address stamps and mailing labels. We have more mailing labels than anyone could possibly need now. Uh, another $5 gift certificate for Build-A-Bear Workshop. Um, something from Saxon Shoes. A $20 off $100 purchase. Um, See, so it's getting empty. <laughs> um, we have a free pastry or sweet. We have, um, we have $10 from Victoria's Secret. Actually for someone else's birthday, but I say it's for it's a birthday card. Came here to my house, addressed to someone who used to live here, but I'll be happy to use it. Free kid size ice cream from Chick-fil-A. Coupon for a steakhouse. Oh, and then we're getting down to the bottom where we've got whoops, the snacks that I try to keep and some go tab Tylenol go tabs, gum, um, little tiny flashlight, got that at Target for practically nothing, um, tissues, nail file, a Sharpie. I always like to have a Sharpie around. Um, juice boxes for the kids, feminine protection products, won't show you those. Um, calculator, oh and there's a measuring tape, I just saw that measuring tape because sometimes you need to measure stuff while you're out and if you have a measuring tape with you then you don't go oh I wish I knew how big that was but that's the errand bag that's all the stuff that lives in the bag any questions I've never told anybody this but <laughs> I was I was so mortified I had chicken coupons so it was two dollars off this bagged frozen chicken and I was get, getting them like crazy because they were on sale for I think 250 so you know I was getting them for 50 cents or with doublers I was getting them for free and so they were the coupons were expiring so I went to the store and I was really going to stock up so I got a whole bunch of them 
and I took my coupons up to the counter and the checker was scanning them and each one beeped and I thought gosh darn it I don't know why they're beeping but he'd you know he'd he'd run it he'd override it and I went out of the store with all this chicken so I go home put it in the freezer and I'm telling my husband and we're all you know pretty pleased that I had done this and about four days later I went out to the freezer to get a bag of chicken and it was the wrong brand I had bought all this chicken with these coupons and I had used the wrong cu or I don't really know how to say that but the chicken was not the same brand that the coupons were and I could hardly breathe I was so so embarrassed and uh, and I actually haven't told anybody that because I felt like I had gypped the store out of all that chicken when she started calling me and telling me how much the grocery store paid her to leave and how many cartloads of stuff she had and then when she started sh started showing me her grocery receipts and there was over well over a thousand dollars and they had paid her seven dollars and about 52 cents that was my shining moment to know my daughter could do that how good she is really good and when I see these people on TV and different things being interviewed about couponing I think ha huh, you ought to see my daughter she's a whole lot better than that <laughs> Tuesday morning and every Tuesday the Oregonian puts out their food day newspaper and little green box and so uh, what I finally respond to is uh, knocking over paper boxes my kids think that's kind of crazy but uh, that's what I do rather than dumpster dive this is a lot easier than dumpster diving put my hand in the box grab a few papers and is there coupons in it and yes this week they, now they only do the smart source, but this week's uh, paper had two sets of smart source, so I'm pretty excited about this. This will give me uh, some either some good coupons or some trading fodder for uh, on the board. 75 cents off of Jello fruit. That's a new thing. I've never seen that before. I can't remember. I think there was a couple things in here that I was pretty excited about when I read the Sunday paper. So I got oh the dollar off the dryers. That's a good coupon right there for us. The Electrosol coupons. So basically what I do is I will uh, come over to the car and I look both ways, come back around, stuff that back in there. And again, I do leave papers for the people. I don't take all of them. So I'll just go to multiple coupon boxes and throw them in here, up in the car, on to the next door. Got our smart source inserts today. Yay. What did we get in here? Uh, buy one, get one free Ken Salad Dressing Ranch. I like that. Ooh, goody. Free razors up to $6.99. Very definitely worth the cost of the paper, which was free. Let's see. Got all of our Lysol, toothbrushes, cut milk for kids, milk coupons. Can't have too many of those. Let's see, is there anything else good in here? Lifesavers ice cream. Why do you want your ice cream that many colors? Uh, spam coupons. Everybody needs more spam. F more free Weight Watchers coupons. Yay. Buy three Weight Watchers frozen desserts and get one free. Ah, uh, 75 and a dollar off of Aquafresh. That means free toothpaste this week. Well, welcome to my garage. We're in my garage. This is my stockpile. Um, I think I was probably the original stockpile picture poster once upon a time because people were always very curious about what my shelving system looked like. So now the whole world gets to see what my shelves look like. So um, we're in my garage and I'm actually trying to figure out where the hell I'm going to put about 150 bottles of marinade. I stole some of the displays from the store, so I'm hoping to try and incorporate that in here somewhere, trying to get through that. But the garage has 
I mean, everything. It's my friends joke and they say that it's like walking into Costco um, because really I never shop for anything until um, it's free is my goal. Uh, I don't like to buy anything. Uh, when I need it, I'd rather have it ahead of time and make sure that it's out here so that the kids know they can just wander out and get something, grab stuff. So I stock everything from coffee to barbecue sauces. I've got behind me um, my breakfast shelf, everything from pancakes and oatmeal and cereal. Um, I'm really kind of a freak about rotating stock. And so anything that's got, you know, late 07, 08 dates is up above so that uh, kids aren't grabbing the wrong stuff. We don't have food that goes to waste. I know people are probably going you know, what the hell does she need, you know, a million cans of whatever for. But really, with as many kids in my family and we've got a large extended family, we use everything. My goal this year actually was to not buy anything and to live off the stockpile. I've got a small freezer here and in the back side of the garage, I've got another fridge freezer and then a bigger fridge and or a bigger freezer. And, um, and then we got all these kids that moved in with us, these extra kids. And so now I'm actually having to uh, start stockpiling because I'm actually going to shift some of this to my brother when he moves back to town but uh, we have his kids right now so I'm back in the shopping mode again but originally we were trying to live off of it and see how uh, much money we didn't have to spend in the course of a year so on the wall back here I've got every kind of cleaning supply um, dish soap electrosols shampoos sunscreens tampons uh, aluminum foil I'm out of Ziploc bags. I don't know how I got out of Ziploc bags but I think I'm out of Ziploc bags so I gotta go buy those drawers <laughs> filled with pasta so when pasta comes on for 25 cents 50 cents I will stock it up we're a pasta eating family the fridges and freezers have t-bones and ribeyes I try and get all the meat I can on sale and like I said my biggest quandary right now is where to store all of these bags of sauce nickel a bottle this week at the Albertsons I'm pretty excited and I got a really good trade with coupons so I've got a gal who uh, sent me 200 coupons so my goal between now and the end of the night before the sale goes off is to finish getting those I think I'm up to about 150 160 of them so a couple more trips I should be there the four packs of cotton nil normally run a dollar 49 Kroger had them on sale for a dollar a package we had gotten two different types of coupons we'd gotten one for a dollar off any four pack of Cottonelle. We also got 35 cents off of any four pack of Cottonelle. We took the dollar coupons and that made them free without any tripling when we went to Kroger. Then we took the 35 cent coupons and Kroger will triple those coupons up to the value of the product. So when they tripled those, it also made the toilet paper free. The nice thing is Cottonelle's got the uh the box tops for education and you got puppy points so for people who collect puppy points I don't collect them but they make great for trading you can get all kinds of stuff from for free with the puppy points but I do collect the box tops and inside each package is actually somewhere buried this 25 cent off one coupon taped to it at least there have been in every other package ah there we go 75 cents off of my next purchase and they're good until uh, the end of this year I've got a rain check so I'll be back getting more toilet paper in December. Actually, I think I've only got about 30 left right now. At the time when we went shopping, we had, we got 50 that trip. When I first started collecting coupons, it was when the kids were growing up and we didn't have doubles and triples back then, but I saved all of my coupon money each week and put it in a coffee can and the kids daddy used to laugh at me because it wasn't much at one time maybe six cents here 32 cents there and I would just save it all year long and when I took us to Six Flags all four of us to Six Flags and Sesame Place and some other theme park around here dad didn't laugh anymore and I would just let it mount up for summer vacations and then my daughter of course grew up watching me do that and now with the doubles and the triples and all the freeze and all of that God, she's good she has so far exceeded anything I could do so this is how I started and how it's come down through two more generations thank you everybody for coming and welcome to couponing 101 I am Dawn, um, otherwise known as Sky's mom, and this wonderful lady is Leanne. She is the one that created our Yahoo group, and 
teaching the classes was her idea. She convinced me to go ahead and I used to teach them and charge for them. Uh, the classes I teach for the group I'm not charging for right now. So that way we can share what we have learned about couponing with everybody so you can save some more money and help your families out, get more stuff for them. Now you can get good deals at places other than the grocery store. We have Target, which is my personal favorite because they have everything on clearance at one point or another. Um, they have a, a markdown cycle. Things get marked down 15, 30, 50, 75, and sometimes they go up to 90% off on the seasonal items. They mark down items once they start. They mark down an item every two weeks. So if it's marked down on Wednesday of this week, you know that two weeks later on Wednesday, those items will be marked down. Um, I do have the schedule of what days different departments mark down, which is always helpful to know. Um, on Mondays, they mark down the infants department, kids clothing, and electronics. So if there are baby items you're looking for, you know, you can go in on Mondays and see what the latest markdowns are. On Tuesdays, they do women's clothing and domestics. On Wednesdays, men's clothing, garden, toys, and health and beauty items. That's always a good day to go and find all the shampoo and razor clearances and match up all your coupons with those. Thursday is lingerie and shoes. You got houseware, sporting goods, and luggage. So if you need that rolling trunk with wheels on it to carry all your stuff around, you can go in on Thursday and see if they've marked it down. Or a good pair of drawers. Uh, yeah, that's true. That, that, that's Lee Ann's shopping day, drawers day. <laughs> on Fridays, we have cosmetics, hardware, auto, home improvement, and jewelry. So now you know generally what days to go in. They try to mark them down and have all of their markdowns done or completed at the store between noon and 2 o'clock. They usually start marking down uh, about 6 o'clock in the morning and will go throughout the morning. But the overnight crew that does that is usually out of there by 2 o'clock. Got the current list of coupons as of the 22nd of April. It's got all of the coupons that came out in the paper in our area with the face value amounts, the expirations, and the date that they came out so that I know when I want to go find my coupons for um, Frisky's Cat Treats. I can go and see what insert they came out of so if I don't know where that coupon is, I know where to go look for it. A wine tag is a coupon that looks like this. Here's one now. Here's one now. Here's one now. Like this. And it hangs on the top of the bottle of wine. Like, like the bottle sticks through there like this. And it just hangs there. And kind of like the blinky machine that says, come and get me. It just hangs there and it says, you can save a dollar now on fresh bakery bread. We're here at Albertsons, um, and we're in the wine department. We started here first, uh, seeing if we might find any wine tags, and we did. Pretty excited about that, because I haven't seen any around in a while. They are the $2 off of any one uh, Hormel 80 Cure Ham, which is a great coupon, because they are like $2.50 over in the meat department. So we'll go grab a couple of those and uh, see if I can't find a few more of these before we go. But uh, we live in Oregon, so Oregon's nice, because the wine tags are no wine purchase necessary. So when you find them, it's like free money. When you walk through there into the liquor section, there will be bottles of wine sitting up there. Look, and look on the tags on them and see if there's anything that's actually good. She had shrimp coupons that she had gotten from wine tags somewhere and something it's else. It's on the wine bottle itself. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, yes, it's a hang tag that's hanging around the neck of the wine bottle. No. 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 The coupons do say no wine purchase necessary on them, on the ones here in Texas. Now, if you're trading with somebody, you do need to make sure that when you're trading 
that the coupons you're getting say no wine purchase necessary because there are some that will say, you know, you do have to purchase the wine. And that it's valid in our state too. Yes, you do have to make sure that it's not one of those coupons that says not valid in Texas and Oklahoma. You know, um, I actually got a wine tag recently that was only good in Texas and Oregon. I have no idea what those two states have in common. They're on opposite ends of the country, but that was the only two states they were good in. In some states you do, but in North Carolina you do not have to buy the wine. It is a no wine purchase necessary coupon. No wine, no beer, no alcohol of any type. If your coupon, the first little number way over here, the teeny tiny little number at the start of the barcode, if that number is a five and your store will double coupons, then the register may allow this coupon to double. If the first little number way over here on the left is a nine, then chances are the store register will not allow that coupon to double. A lot of times what I find is that a coupon that's sitting here like this, that's hanging down here off like the Nally, is that this will sit here and it'll sit here and it'll go bad. Sometimes you'll find like right here, we're coming up to a blinky machine if you've never seen a blinky machine before. And 75 cents off of two General Mills cereal. I really like blinky machines because if it is a good blinky, this one's not necessarily my favorite, but if it is, you get little kids, they're right here at their level, they're pulling them, pulling them, pulling them, and mom puts them right back in there because she's not using them. It means I'm gonna come back around, take the stack, add it to my trading pile. A blinky machine, you know those nice little machines that spit out coupons when you go shopping, they invite you to take them, and they have the little blinking light and they say, please take coupons, and I do. I do. I, I take the coupons from the blinky machine. Pissed me off. I'm sitting here watching this guy and he's shopping and he's on the soap aisle and they're buy one get one free and they're normally like $6.99. He just grabs one. I'm like, you freaking moron. And he doesn't take the free one. I wanted to take the free one, have him scan it and I'd take it home, but he wasn't having any part of that. The other thing I do besides look for coupons, I look for big empty holes in the store shelf because that's an item that I can go ahead and get a rain check for and I'm all over a rain check for this. Even if you never shopped with a coupon or um, was watching for bargain prices, you still have to watch what's on the shelf. Used to be you could just run in, get your stuff, leave, be in a hurry, but I'm looking at this product right here and it's calorie countdown milk. And if I was in a hurry and I was just needed a half gallon of milk, these look like just regular white milk. Uh, you know, 2% says it's 2%. And in looking at the ingredient statement on it, yeah, it only has 90 calories, but it's not real milk. First ingredient's water. Second ingredient is ultra, yeah, gross. <laughs> ultra filtered fat-free milk cream, uh, tricalcium phosphate, salt, disodium phosphate, mono and diglycerides, words I can't even produce, uh, pronounce. It's got Splenda in it. Um, and so they're marketing it as a diet choice. Juice, I'm kind of six one way, half dozen the other on. Sometimes they'll put out juice like this as a loss leader, two for a dollar. Okay, yeah, I've got to make it, but it's 50 cents and it makes me 48 ounces. But a lot of times, the juice on the other side of the store in the refrigerated case, I can get a better deal on. Um, two weeks ago, they had uh, Tropicana juices, part of the Quaker juices. I had a dollar off each one. They were uh, five for $12, less a dollar off each one and doubled. I actually got more juice that way because they were 64 ounce containers than I would have buying orange juice from the frozen aisle over here. Uh, Minute Maid, for example, you know, here's a branded one. For $2.15, and it's only gonna make me 48 ounces. So for what I was buying at the refrigerated aisle, I was actually getting a better deal. So you really have to watch on the juice to see, am I getting the best deal? buying it this way or having a cheap dollar store pitcher in my house and making up juice that way. Another item that, you know, once it's fresh and it's here and it's seasonal, most people don't know for strawberries, if you wanted to actually freeze them and preserve them, you throw them on a cookie sheet individual, you don't wash them, you throw them in the freezer, and then once they're frozen, you throw them in a Ziploc bag and then they don't stick so you're individually quick freezing each one and then not washing them before you freeze them, then when you wash them off the first time, they're not mushy and nasty. So when these are two for three dollars and they're a pound each, it's a great deal and it's a nice way to have fresh fruit all the way through the year. Frozen vegetables, if you're trying to get your kids and families to eat more vegetables, frozen vegetables, canned vegetables are a really good choice. Um, bought some canned vegetables the other day, the Del Monte's, they were two for a dollar. And on the label is 45 cents off two. So doubled, 
Yes, he bought 10 of them to go through the store with, cut the coupons off, then went back through. You start getting them for, you know, five, 10 cents a can. In my shop, right, it's four, if it's on sale, it's usually four items. So you could get four. So that's why it's always important to get multiple sets of coupons. So you get, so if you're gonna buy four items that are on sale, might as well put four coupons on each one of those and you could save that way. And um, some items that are really good on sale, it's limit one, limit two. And if you have to, go back to the store. If, you live, if it's convenient for you, if you have more coupons, go during the week. The sale is on for a week. So we're at a Chips Ahoy display um, and we've got tear pads here. And a tear pad, it's basically a coupon that you rip off the pad and inside, they might have some marketing stuff that goes along with it, but for this one particularly is a dollar off any three craft products. So you're looking at the brands that are in there, you've got handy snacks, you've got Capri Suns, you might specify some of the products that you can use it on. Um, but these are nice because, you know, Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, that's a pretty popular item. It's not one that I particularly buy, but I'm looking at these and I'm going, okay, I do a lot of coupon trading. So I'm thinking that I can probably, uh, these will have a, a commodity value on our website where people actually do a lot of coupon trading. So I'm gonna actually swipe a few more of these. And when I find tear pads, I do try and leave some of them for other people. I know that there are people out there who don't, but I do try to leave some because I don't need that much and I don't need to trade for that much. So I do do those. And one of the things I'll do when I look through a grocery store is what other coupons can I find with it? You've got on top of it, you got a Peely coupon right here. This is a hell of a deal. It's gonna be a dollar off of um, a dollar off of cookies when you buy milk. Milks, I can get a coupon from another store and um, get a deal on the milk. Sometimes it's cheap as 99 cents a gallon. So with a coupon like this, and then the cookies are on sale. I've got a dollar off three. I can use some doubles with it. Basically, it's free cookies, free milk. My kids are happy. Everyone always laughs at this, so I'll show you this. This is the Ring O Cards. Uh, I finally had to put them on their own key ring because they were too much on, in the way on my regular key ring. So I have my husband's extra care buck card. I have my library card. I have my Ucrops card. I have my CVS card. The Kroger card. The Food Lion card. The Stranges, that's a local fl uh, florist. The Ace Hardware card. The DSW Shoe Warehouse card. The Saxon Shoes Reward card. The PetSmart Pet... Smart Pet Perks card, Office Depot, Office Max, and Staples, Steinmart, um, VIC, I'm not even sure what this one is. Um, oh wait, that could be Harris Teeter, that's when we go to the beach. Yeah, Harris Teeter, we don't even have that around here, but that's near the beach. Good Foods Groceries, which is um, the one of the Whole Foods grocery stores. The Discovery Store Passport Rewards, again, we don't have that here. Um, but they sent me a card because I can use it online and then scrapbooking. So people always laugh at that when I pull it out because it has so many on it. But if you're going to do the deals, then you have to let everybody track you with their rewards cards. I was in uh, Michigan for work a couple of, about a month ago. And I was in the, I walked into one of my sister's stores and they have coupon dispensers on the aisles. And, um, they had some for Nesquik that were like 50 cents off, and you never see coupons like that around here. So they had the little dispensers on a machine. I just, I drained it of all the coupons, and it came back there on sale, 10 for $10. I had 50 cent off coupon for it, doubled it up. Bam, now I have 10, uh, <laughs> 10 things of Nestle Quick for nothing. People kind of get a little weary about markdown meat, but the thing of it is, is most stores have a policy about having to get rid of meat, particularly ground beef because of E. coli. And so Albertsons is usually really good about sweeping through the meat department, marking down what they want to get rid of for the night. Oh, you're gonna turn around right there. And so I've got $3 worth of free meat coming to me and I'm gonna go through and try and figure out what is gonna work best so that I'm not paying any money. But I'm also kind of choosy about cut because I won't just buy any kind of meat just because. So I'm thinking they've got two stir fries. I'm gonna take the $2 off each one when we get to the register. I have three free dollars coming to me. So $5 uh, here uh, and then $3 off. So I'm gonna pay $2 for meat tonight. Got a pound and a half of stir fry cut beef. And then I have some seafood coming to me. So now we're gonna go back to the seafood section. 
grocery store is kind of where I get my exercise is the be able to run around from one end of the store to the other because I'm not the most organized shopper when all's said and done. A lot of people think I am and I can think organized and type organized, but when I actually get to the store and I'm doing it, not so organized. Well, I really don't get embarrassed anymore, but I, when I was an amateur doing it, first starting out doing, I left my coupon, uh, I guess my coupon organizer in a shopping cart just wigged me out. So I was like, oh. so I went back, I went back to the store like a lunatic raving. Did anybody turn this in thinking someone's actually going to turn in a box full of coupons, which that didn't happen. And usually um, I save so much at a time or a percentage. It's, I guess it's not the dollar amount. It's the percentage amount that they always have to override my, um, my, uh, override my order. So a manager will have to come out on Sunday when it's busy and there's 30 people in line and there I am with my 80 coupons for all, all 80 items I'm getting, you know, people kind of wig out. But then, then they see like people behind me, like they're looking they're like, wow, look at all the money he saved on that. And I'm like, it's, yeah. Uh, we would start off with the cooler with drinks and food so we wouldn't have to stop to eat. We would start off in Loganville where we lived. And then we, would, we had a certain route to go to Atlanta, which was an hour away, but it'd take us like three hours. And then we'd go on Form Hunter's Row which is the road we called, um, I think it was um, Stone Mountain Parkway or something. But we go every grocery store. We knew which ones to skip that they didn't have them and uh, which ones had a lot. And then we would take turns going up and down the rows, getting forms. Of course, we wouldn't get them all. We'd leave some for somebody else. And then we'd come back out, dump them in the trunk. And then by the time we got home, after the end of the day, the trunk would be literally full just with refund forms. And it would take me a week just to get them all sorted out, and then I'd start trading with them. Diapers, usually um, in the winter, the companies seem to um, either redesign their packages to put a different happy little um, animal on it, or they take one or two diapers out of the pack to try and save some money, and um, the drugstores will reset the diapers um, and Target also. But again, CVS and Rite Aid were the big ones, oh, and Walgreens were the big ones around here that I could go in. And if I found diapers for 75% off, I just bought all they had in whatever size we were wearing and the rest of the sizes up and never spent more than a couple of dollars on a pack of diapers in the two and a half years that each of my children were in diapers brand diaper versus the store brand diaper, you're actually going to save more money because one, the, the, the weekly paper is actually going to put out a manufacturer's coupon for that. Upwards of $2 plus a 50 cent double. They're on sale for $9.99. Now again, this store is a little more expensive. So the sale at Albertsons for Pampers is probably going to be a little bit less. So I'll probably get the diapers at Albertsons and they're going to be $6.99. But when I go through the aisle, at the checkout aisle, and they're scanning the coupons, a lot of times, a Catalina coupon will spit up for the other brand. And so um, when I first was buying diapers, um, I was stocking and I had known then what I know now, I would have basically bought out the store for the next 20 years worth of diapers. My, um, the Safeway in our areas, when I first started having to buy diapers, were buy one and then you get the other one completely free. So you're using coupons to get the one pack really cheap, the next pack would be free and they kept going vice versa, vice versa. Um, so you can save a lot of money that way just by buying the name brand. The store brand right here doesn't have a coupon that goes with it. Uh, you get 34 diapers for $9.59. This one here you get $34 for $9.99 on sale um, if I, was buying, I had to buy them at this store. But I'd have a 2 or $3 coupon to go with this. Um, I bought something the other day and I don't know why it's still giving me diaper Catalinas, but it was $3 off Pampers. So if they were $8.99 at Albertsons, less the $3, and I can double my Catalinas here, then I'm looking at $5.50. Now, when I buy diapers, I'll use, again, one of those 10 off 50 coupons. And so I will buy as many diapers as I can for $50 and then take the $10 off and really walk out with like an extra couple packs of diapers for free. Um, same with baby formula. You use the formula check, you use the formula coupon with the check, and then you use a 10 off 50 one trip in and out you just buy those items you use your eight dollars in double coupons and you leave um, babies are expensive i think the last kit i had i might have spent 
three or four hundred dollars on diapers and I know I only spent three hundred dollars on formula and they say that the national average for baby formula you should plan on fifteen hundred bucks to get through one kid three hundred was plenty and if I like I said if I'd known then what I know now you know I would have uh, certainly made better choices about diapers early on and stocked up the loves down here are seven ninety nine a lot of times loves will put out a two or three dollar coupon so again you know you're buying a national brand um, the loves has a guarantee so if you don't like their diapers you call them up and you tell them, hey, your diapers suck and they'll give you another, you know, give you your money back. Um, a lot of times the Pampers or Huggies have kind of other things that go along with them. So if you're smart, you start collecting points. When we had kids, um, the Pampers had Pamper points. And I think these ones still do too, if I look at them. Kind of towards the UPC, it's been a long time. Uh, I don't know if they're doing Pampers points. But we had Pampers points and it, you could collect kind of the UPC and each of them had a point value. And if you turned in your Pampers points at the end, you could buy prizes. Well, they had those like Jeep Cherokee things that are battery operated, your kids drive around in the yard with. I got two of those <laughs> for buying diapers. So an additional saving, those things are, you know, 150, 200 bucks for a Jeep. And actually, the one Jeep they gave me, then they ran out of Jeeps, they sent me a check for cash. So I was real happy to have the cash for the second Jeep. So that's kind of how you start looking at saving money on diapers. Oh, I, I'm, I'm probably, in the minority, but I would go cloth. If I had another baby again, I would go cloth diapers. Um, I adopted my youngest son um, 16 years ago, and you know that was after cloth diapers were in. And I, I mean, after um, the paper diapers were in, and I used cloth diapers with him. And this was after you know the Pampers and all were like in full swing. But you can't, you even washing them, you still save. I mean, what are diapers now? what, $13, $14, $15 dollars for a pack? Well, that's one pack less you have to buy when you wash them yourself. It's just, it's not fun to have to wash them, but it's, it helps out in the long run when it comes money-wise. I was in the library one day, and I was looking for books on organization. Sorry, my stapler's loud. And strangely enough, the library was disorganized, and in the organization section, was a book about couponing and it caught my interest so I checked it out and I read it and it was almost too good to be true at least that's what I thought and it took about three or four weeks of really trying to coupon until it worked and I remember the first day that I shopped and I hardly spent any money. I think I spent $10 on a regular week's grocery shopping. And I was so excited, I wasn't sure if I should drive. It was after about eight years of doing it on my own, what I could, I realized there were magazines. So I started taking the magazines and then I got into it real big. When I was uh, going back to when I was younger, my mother used to have a refund business, which I guess was illegal back in the day, I guess trading coupons and she would, this is in the, in the 70s, would send, li they had want list out. I guess they would publish them in magazines or like a little like coupon kind of magazine. And she would get coupons from all over the U.S. And it was like a trade-off deal. And uh, that was another reason why I kind of got started on. We had a, a file cabinet in our, in our attic filled with just labels for refunds. And she even named it like Tiger Refund for the, the Michigan reference of where they were from. So it was, you know, I saw all that. I saw how much they were making on that. And I'm like, okay, I could do this. It's simple. I was uh, advanced EMT on an ambulance. Yeah. And I was divorced at the time and had three kids, they teenagers. And I wanted to be home with them because I was working 24, 48 hour shifts. So I started, I knew everything about refunding there was to know because I've been refunding for so many years. So I thought, why don't I just start a little magazine for the fun of it? and it just took off. Yeah. And so after three months, I was able to quit my EMT job. It was fun to put together, and, um, but I typed it at the time. Well, I type it now, but um, I did it on a typewriter. And when I started off, I had absolutely zilch money because I was working on the, the ambulance. And so I went to some um, salvage place and got a selector typewriter marked down. And that's what I did the whole magazine on for the first year. And it was hard because the, I wanted the offers in alphabetical order, but you can't type them in alphabetical order when you're typing. You know, you just 
what you get in each day you type and you can't move it and um, so it was hard doing that in the ads and um, and decorating it I now you have clip art on the computer but back then the readers would send me in pieces of clip art that they cut from magazines that they liked and that's what I used the first few magazines there were no articles because um, pretty much the um, the section for the letters was I have no letters please send me some letters because you know the magazines brand new but like uh, and um, my friend at the time was Betty Clack and she would write letters just so we'd have some letters in there or she would write comments and um, I haven't seen her in a long time but um, like here's the uh, I think that's the third one I put out and I actually went to colored paper for the cover but um, Oh wow, these bring back memories, they're so old. I had fun doing this one. Because these are, uh, that's Barbara Sisson, Jane Johnson, um, Ruth Larkin, I can remember some of their names. But I stuck them all in a pool for one of the summer issues. And uh, they thought it was funny, hysterical. Well, the coupon box, I realized, I used to have, a friend of mine gave this to me because she knows how much I like coupons, gave me a coupon organizer for Christmas as kind of like a gag gift but no and, you know I'm pretty passionate about the coupons so I'm like it was nice but I'm like looking at them like you know this is like sending a boy to do man's work so then I I went out and got myself a photo organizer and I have it all broken down I started out with putting these in files but then I thought I'd try you know the binder method and and clip them and file them, and that was pretty good for a while, but it was just way too overwhelming. Once I started dumpster diving and getting more inserts, more than just a couple, I gave up, and, and I'm much happier not spending the time. Um, this is a pile of coupons that I have not cut for a while, um, because I'm kind of disorganized. Uh, but they're organized by weeks, so that if a sh good deal should come along, I can say, okay, well, here are the coupons from you know, March 14th, um, and then find the coupon I need for the deal. Um, I used to clip them all and file them all diligently, and I found that that was just taking up a lot of time, um, and so I stopped doing that quite as much. This is what I keep at home. I have two bins, and I have the inserts filed by date. And so usually I'll get a list of what I want to, want to purchase, and then I'll... Um, go online and find out where I can find the coupons in the inserts and then I'll go through the inserts and cut out the coupons coupons I want. I don't clip every coupon because I don't I don't need them you know but and I, you know if I need stuff for refunds I'll cut those out and uh, I never buy stuff that I'm never going to use I'll buy stuff that I I can use and it's I don't see something on sale I buy it I just you know go along with what I need like I said, the coupon is about in the middle. I made a note in my head that it was right in front of these coupons. So that makes it a little easier to find. Open it to the middle with the Texas Steakhouse. All right, there we go. Um, my kids are always asking for these things for snacks. Um, the Snyders of Hanover is reasonably healthy. So there are my five coupons for those. I got the briefcase because my coupons didn't seem to fit in anything else. I just started with um, an envelope and then I started several envelopes and then it kind of got a little bit crazy. So then I used, uh, for a long time I used it, you get in the grocery store, I mean the uh, department store, it's just a check cashing, a check thing. And I used that for a long time and then after a while it wasn't big enough, so that's when you start looking for specific um, things that are made for coupons, and that's how I ended up with the one I have. It wasn't my idea, actually. It was my husband's idea. And I had a box that was only about this big, I'd say, like half of this size, like about that big. And it was clear my coupons were not fitting. They were crammed in there and shoved in there and overflowing. And when he suggested it to me, I thought it was a little bit obvious and I wasn't very happy about that. I was trying to be like an undercover couponer, like 
you know, below the radar is something we often say. I carry the free coupons and some of the better are the other ones because I don't haul my big old coupon box with me in the store. I guess when you start at the age of 60, you know, there's some things you're not going to do anymore. <laughs> it's organized with food on this side and non-food on this side. And it has dividers to keep the coupons in sections just so that they don't flop around too much. And on the top, I have a place for a calculator and pens and pencils and any other flyers that I want to remember, things that I see I pick up while I'm shopping that I can organize later scissors and pencils and pens. I think it's a good idea for people who like to have all their coupons with them, who it's easy to alphabetize, but you could just as easily set it up in categories. But um, I like it because it fits all of my coupons. I don't have to leave any in the car. I don't have some at home. I have them all with me. A lot of it was given away. There was a um, the name of it was, um, I can't remember, it began with an A, but it was uh, a home for teenagers that ran away from home, and we gave a lot of it to, to that home. Last year, we were able to donate over $11,000 worth of merchandise to the local food pantry, and it cost us less than $100 to do that. The food pantry here supports several ministries for the homeless, for men, for women, as well as for citizens who have need of a food pantry at various times due to various circumstances. I'd sit there and I'd think, I can't believe I have all this stuff. I mean, it's, the neighbors used to love it, honest, because we had a stack of trash bags right there by the, it was in the garage. And um, my ex-husband at the time, he made shelves all the way around the garage and then he built a closet onto the garage with shelves all in it and it was just, it was like that lady you were telling me about, and we had aisles in the garage. I had so much stuff, and uh, they would just walk up and down the aisles and, and pick out what they wanted, and then I would tell them how much it was. This is my trash. Okay. This in the drawer under it, and it used to be the whole thing was full, but like, um, what is this? This is my candy section, and the more you break it down, the quicker it is to find something. Like this is M&M Mars, and this one would be, uh, I don't know what this one, miscellaneous. But um, you break it down, this is beer, and um, it's all alphabetical, and then I have the bottom drawer. Like, this is dog food, and then you got another one in there, cat food. This is what you send in, they ask for the UPC, and so this is what you send in. And um, you save every Kellogg's box you open, you save the UPC or the box top now. They keep changing, trying to out full of out trickers. And um, so, like if Campbell's, I mean, if Kellogg's or Rice Krispies has an offer out, I'm set because I got a bunch of those in here. Right. And um, they didn't say when you had to buy it. They just said you have to buy it. It doesn't matter if it was bought 10 years ago, okay? You bought it. And so you send in the proof of purchase for it. And um, now they have all kind of good offers, like for um, the movie, the movies that are out. You can, I mean, free movie tickets. And... Um, I, yeah, Kellogg's has one out that um, you can get three free DVDs. My grocery budget is $25 a week, and I don't always spend that. There's some weeks that it just carries over. There are some weeks that I don't shop at all. Um, so I'd say the average is well less than $25 a week. For a family of four. For a family of four, two dogs, two guinea pigs. Can't leave them out. So, everybody always says you can't get meat with coupons, you know, I can only eat so much macaroni and cheese, there's only so much cereal you can eat, whatever. Um, I'm here to tell you I've got two freezers at home full of meat that I've probably barely paid any money for at all. And one of the ways you can do it is you just have to look around your meat aisle and see what's here. Um, Foster Farms, kind of a West Coast brand, although they've got Foster Farms corn dogs all over the damn country. but. They put these out um, and about every six months they sit here and nobody takes them. But I'll come around and, and help the guy do his job, and I take him. So they've got save a dollar on any Foster Farms boneless, skinless chicken breast. So I'll look around, find the package of chicken breasts, and if they are marked down, and you don't necessarily want to pay $10, but on the 17th, they're going to mark this down. It's going to be about a buck 45 for the package. 
and I'm going to use a dollar off coupon and get this package of chicken for 45 cents. And so feasibly, depending on what you purchase, you can actually make money to buy meat at the grocery store. In this scenario over here where they've got some meat marked down, again, they've got a coupon on the meat right there. You peel off the sticker. This is a dollar off. So feasibly now you're paying, you know, next to nothing for the cube steak. And then again, you buy the other product and you send in the rebate. Now you've just made money to buy meat at the grocery store. And most people don't know that the meat sitting in your markdown aisle, they usually keep it away from, if you look and kind of see the other rest of the meat counter and how far down it goes, they keep it away from um, uh, where people can see it. And the nice thing is Albertsons is really good if, um, if they've got this meat sitting here at the end of the night, the Oregon Food Bank will come and pick it up. They will cut it down into portions and freeze it. Um, but I usually try and come and find stuff here. Morning's better time because they usually have T-bones and ribeyes. And so it's not like you're just eating junk cuts of meat either. You're eating quality cuts that uh, you can't, um, uh, you don't, well right now, you just can't afford to pay full price for at the grocery store. Um, last fall, they were marking down meat and our local stores put out a coupon for $10 off uh, a $50 purchase. I went through the line four times and when all was said and done, I spent $180 and I bought $1,000 worth of meat. Threw it in the freezer, went home, chopped it up, made it into cuts that I could use, stir fry strips, uh, strips for stew, ground some up for uh, hamburger meat, cut some big pieces and made my own petite sirloin cut. So really, you can save on meat at the grocery store. Um, produce is the same way. There are coupons out there that if you buy the salad dressing, you get free produce. And they're not always a rebate. Sometimes these coupons, the dollar off of whatever, are an instant coupon. So you can just, Kraft is notorious for putting those out. You buy the barbecue sauce, it's on sale for a dollar. And a few weeks ago, they had a coupon. If you buy any barbecue sauce, you got a dollar off of produce. If you had a 50 cent off one coupon for the barbecue sauce that's on sale right there for a buck, and then you turn around and use your double, the barbecue sauce is free and now I just got free produce. So it's not all about buying crap box food in the middle of the store. Um, my family eats really well and we don't necessarily eat Kraft macaroni and cheese. In fact, I can't remember the last time my kids had Kraft macaroni and cheese. So there's a lot of different choices and you just have to pay attention and be savvy. I'm, I'm happy to find the, the salad coupons and the salad dressing coupons and, and I'm, a lot of times I leave the free cake mix in the store. And when we were in the store one time and like this older lady was sitting behind me watching how much I saved, she goes, wow, it's so great to see a younger guy so, you know, passionate about coupons and savings. Like it all goes back to, you know, it's there, grab it, you know, it's free money. If somebody's going to give you a $100 bill, are you going to take it or you take it, turn it down? Now you'll jump all over it. I don't know if you're going to find this interesting or not, but our governor uh, had a a food stamp week where he had $21 to go buy groceries for a week and it was an example of, of you know how food stamps are meant to be supplements to your food uh, budget not your whole food budget and I thought wow $21 man I could you know I could easily feed my family for $21 in a week but not only that it was per person in the family so you know, as a couponer, I could probably feed my family for the whole month on a week's worth of food stamps for a family of four. And yet, the state is saying that uh, it's only meant as a supplement. And the, oh, I've never seen anybody use food stamps and, and cut coupons, which is, you know, ridiculous. Uh, it, 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 so bothers me in the stores. Um, a lot of times when I'm buying something for my granddaughter in the baby section, I'll see young parents who obviously don't have a lot of money to spend buying generic brands and paying, you know, four times more than I would with the coupons. And, you know, debating and debating and debating over these products. Um, the times I've been able to give people coupons, they look at me like I'm nuts. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's me personally or the fact that they don't understand coupons or they just don't trust people in general, but it's not been a very good experience trying to help people with coupons, even when I know that it would be you know, useful for them. It's puzzling to me. 
uh, I go down the cereal aisle and I won't pay over a dollar for a box of cereal and most likely I won't pay over 50 cents. But you see young families in there and, and the kids are, you know, their parents tell the kids, okay, you can pick out one box of cereal and it'll be $5.99. You know, and there's Blinkies right there and they won't take them. So I, just, I don't understand why more people don't pay attention to what's available. There, there's no reason to use the cheap generic um, products when you can get the good ones for free. I, I tell people about it and I, and I always like to come to work and, and tell them about my good deals or you know something that was really hot for the weekend and, and I'll bring things in that, I, that I've gotten for free and give it out. Um, and they're always really happy for me, but nobody really wants to put in the time or the effort. A uh, few people that I've talked to about this have said, oh, well, you know, I used to do that when I raised my kids and I had to clip coupons to stay in my budget. And now that I make more money, I don't have to do that anymore. You know, it's something in my past that, the, you know, I don't look on favorably. It was, a, you know, a have to situation. So I guess I came to it late because maybe when I needed to do it more, I, I didn't know how to do it. And now that I, I actually don't have to do it to stay within a budget, I find it fascinating. Mucinex, Metamucil, Mop and Glow went too far. All right. Hey, Metamucil. He, I got two. I got a two dollars off any size. Oh, why would they call it Berry Burst? That doesn't sound. That's wrong. That's just. Oh, that's very bad. You shouldn't. That's just inappropriate. That's anyway. He, your cousin can have these if he would like them. That's just. That's. Okay, now I need a drink. <laughs> that's, that's very unpleasant to think about. <laughs> they could have named it Rushing Falls. <laughs> that wouldn't, okay. Okay, where were we? It's like if somebody's gonna give you a bucket of excrement, Take it because you always use the bucket for something, you know? <laughs>